We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Uh, give you a praise report that Maria Stewart received the Holy Ghost. There she is with Brother McGee. She received the Holy Ghost yesterday in the Governor's Glen Assisted Living Community Apostolic Tabernacle Service. How many believe that you're never too old to receive the Holy Ghost? And you're never too elderly to receive the promises of God in your life. I think we really ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That's something that's worth shouting about. That's something that's worth being excited about. And so I'd like you to welcome her to our extended church family. And uh, she's just a part of Apostolic Tabernacle now. And uh, I don't see it. Sister McDermott is teaching my son in Sunday school right now, but she prayed her through the Holy Ghost. Brother T preached the gospel to him. I think that's a wonderful thing, don't you? And I think we ought to just give a good hand clap of appreciation to all of those that labor in our community evangelism ministries. We're launching our Spanish ministry this year in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And we have jail ministries and, and nursing home ministries. And uh, please pray for them. And if you're not involved and you'd like to be, uh, ask, ask us about getting involved. The Lord will bless you when you reach out to your community. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited about the goodness of God. I'd like to turn your attention to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse number 4. 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse number 4. And if you have that, say praise the Lord. And we'll just read the one verse. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. And his name was Mephibosheth. I'd like to preach from this perhaps a unique title, Code 307. Code 307. And I realize that my title is ambiguous, but it'll be made clear in just a moment. Could we put our Bibles down and lift up our hands? And let's just invite the presence of the Lord. How many know service isn't over? We're, we came to hear the preaching of the word. Lord, we love you today and we're thankful for what we feel here in church. We're thankful that every time we come into your presence, Lord, that you touch us, that you minister to us. Lord, we believe that anything is possible here today, right now. And I thank you for this great cloud of witnesses. I thank you for this congregation, Lord. I pray that you would help me to minister the word that you've placed in my heart. And we love you today. One more time, would you just clap your hands to the Lord? Amen, amen. Look at the person beside you and say, I'm going to preach with the preacher. Tell him I'm not going to leave him all by himself up there. Amen. Thank you for standing. Thank you for worshiping today. And you may be seated. I worked at an, at an airport for several years, and, uh, and I was always upset by how the baggage handlers would treat people's luggage. It would bother me, and I would see them, and I had a, uh, the kind of security clearance where I could go anywhere. I could go uh, underneath the airport. I could go out on the tarmac, and I would, I would see every day the baggage handlers as they would handle other people's luggage. And, I know that accidents are one thing, and we all know that accidents happen, but, but I noticed that when, when they didn't think anybody was looking, isn't it funny how we act different when we don't think people are looking, amen? When they didn't think anybody was looking, they would, they would launch those bags across the room. Sometimes they would get out in that baggage claim area, and, and if no one was down there, they would throw that luggage across the room, and, and uh, it would hit the floor with a boom, and... And uh, they would drop them and toss them and drag them and everything else you can imagine. And next time you fly, look out the plane's window and watch those guys tossing that luggage underneath the plane. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And if they're in a big enough hurry, they'll, they'll throw that luggage just as hard and just as fast 
as they possibly can with absolutely no concern for the contents. Brother Mueller's not here today. I know they're out of town, and I'm not trying to pick on mail carriers, but the other day I was expecting a delivery from UPS, and when they, when they got to my house, the guy didn't know that I was watching from the window, and, uh, and he threw the box out of his truck, and I mean just slammed it on the ground, and then he jumped out behind the box. If you work for UPS today, I'd like to pray with you after service and believe that God will touch you and bless you. <laughs> Amen. And normally that might not would have bothered me. In fact, usually it wouldn't have bothered me at all. But I knew what the contents of that package were, you see. And I knew that there were fragile things inside of that package. In fact, you couldn't miss it if he would have bothered to look. I'm not bitter at all, I promise. But if he would have bothered to look, he would have seen that all over that package, all over that cardboard box, there were stickers that worn, fragile, handle with care. I sometimes think that we human beings could use a warning sticker that let people know that we're fragile and we need to be handled with care. We need people to be careful with us. And just like luggage and poorly protected cargo, people get mishandled and severely damaged every day, every single day. Somebody is harmed in this world. Sometimes, and I risk putting us in a depressed mood right now, but, but I want to go ahead and go this direction. Sometimes it's physical damage suffered at the hands of an abusive husband or a violent father or common street violence that just happens senselessly or the ever-increasing school shootings and mall rampages. In fact, it was in the news yesterday and this morning, another shooting in another mall. And, uh, and I know that many of us will... Uh, look at this and accuse the preacher of trying to be sensational when I say this, but, but our government is exasperated because they do not understand this disturbing rise of senseless uh, mass killings where shooters are entering movie theaters and shopping malls and schools and, and gunning down innocent bystanders. Did you know that every 120 seconds another person is seriously injured or even killed in an alcohol-related crash. That's the world that we're living today. One minute everything is fine and the next minute someone's world is turned upside down because of another alcoholic in denial and America won't even admit we have a problem. Instead, we'd like to, we'd like to legalize marijuana and say it's really not as bad as alcohol. That's the world. World we're living in. Some people look fine on the outside, but inwardly they are desperately trying to put together the pieces because of emotional and psychological damage. Some people are so crippled because of spiritual abuse and spiritual turmoil that they just can't seem to get straightened out in their life, and so they suffer in silence. Mephibosheth was only five years old when the tragic news came to his caregiver, his nurse, that Jonathan, his father, and King Saul, his grandfather, had died in battle at Jezreel, fearing for his safety. The Bible says that she picked that child up in her arms and fled for safety. And somehow in her haste, she accidentally dropped that innocent little child. And the injury was so severe that he was lame in both feet for the rest of his life. It was a senseless moment of undeserved damage. It was just one of those things that was nobody's fault. Nobody did it on purpose, but life happened. Things happened and, and he was harmed in the process of every day life. Mephibosheth was the son and the grandson of warriors. He had a kingly lineage and, and uh, there was probably a time in his life when people thought that perhaps he might be a king one day or at the very least a, a prince among men. But his damage made it impossible for him to distinguish himself on the battlefield. He lived a life of poverty in those early days and a life of obscurity in spite of his high profile family and in, in spite of the royal blood that flowed in his veins he was just too damaged to do anything else 
He had probably heard of the deep friendship that his father shared with King David. He had probably heard that David had promised his father that he would take care of his children and grandchildren, but David didn't even know who Mephibosheth was. And and, and not only that, he was far too busy fighting Philistines on the battlefield and establishing the kingdom of Israel to bother with someone as insignificant and damaged as Mephibosheth. I'm preaching to someone here today who is damaged this morning, someone who is broken, and your your damage might be easily noticed or it might be carefully hidden, but it's real and it's keeping you depressed. It's keeping you downtrodden. You you feel like your particular damage will keep you from ever being truly blessed. It's keeping you from cultivating a right relationship with God. It's keeping you from moving on and getting over. It's holding you back and pushing you down. And, and you don't know what to do or where to turn. You've, you've heard that God cares for you. You've heard that He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But He just seems too far away. He just seems out of reach and too busy. And and you know that your parents had a relationship with the king, but but you don't feel capable of having that same kind of relationship. It's, It's not that you don't love God. It's just that you feel too damaged to really know him, really love him. Your daddy was a worshiper. Your mama was a worshiper. But you're just too damaged to be a worshiper like they were. Your daddy dined with kings. But you're just too damaged to dine with kings. I'm preaching to somebody today who's going through some things. I I wonder if there's anyone here that would be willing to stand with this preacher and raise your hand and say, I'm a human being who has been mishandled and hurt at some point in my life. Somebody dropped me. Somebody mishandled me. Somebody abused me. Somebody did some wrong things to me. The shipping industry, UPS in particular, uses a a special code to mark the packages that are shipped. And and each number is a code that represents the status of the package during the different stages of the delivery process. And, And they mark each one distinctively. And code number three, I looked these up, code number three says that the goods have arrived in defective condition. They've made it to their destination, but they will never be the same and they will never be what they were intended to be. Code number 20 says that the goods were delayed in the course of transportation and possibly they will never reach their desired destination. Code 49, and I believe the devil's been talking to somebody here today and this is and this is the code that he'd like to stamp on your life. He'd like to say, this is where you're stuck. Code 49 says the package has been lost. Somewhere between the starting point and the destination. Somebody got careless and the goods were hopelessly lost. I rebuke the enemy right now that would like to stamp that code on your life. Listen to me, young person. All is not lost. You're just starting out in your life. God knows the good plans that he has for you. God's working all things together for good. Oh, God's got a far different code for your life. Code 81, here's another code that the devil would like to stamp on your life. It says the package has been returned in a wrecked condition. Somehow during the journey the goods were damaged beyond repair, which rendered it worthless and destroyed its original value. Oh, the devil's been beating somebody up with this code today. When a code 81 is returned, it is simply discarded into the trash and forgotten. Oh, I came to minister to somebody today. God has not forgotten about you. God is not about to discard you. I don't care what your family said. I don't care what the haters said. I don't care what your enemy said. God has a plan for you. And I reject that code for your life. Codes 106 to 109 signify that delivery has been refused. It made it to the destination, but the recipient would not accept the package. I'm talking, oh, I love old Yatasa. I'm talking to somebody today. It feels like everywhere you turn, you are rejected and unaccepted, and nobody cares enough about you. They even receive it when it comes. 
preaching to somebody today who feels as if rejection is on every side. You may even feel like God is rejecting you, but I want you to know if you'd come to this altar and lift up your hands, you could feel the presence of God. I promise you today, if you'll come into His presence, He will not reject you. He will not discard you. He will not push. Oh, I wish a child of God could testify with me today that God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. If you come to Him, He will always receive you with arms open like the father he'll be standing on the roadside looking for the prodigal son to come home waiting for him to make his way back to where he belongs code 266 states that adverse weather conditions have affected delivery uncontrollable conditions in the atmosphere have created an environment where delivery is not possible And so they stamp the code that says it may or may not ever be delivered. And that's where somebody is today. You're wondering, you're wondering, will I ever be delivered from what's holding me back? Will will this pain, will this turmoil, will the damage that's been done to me, will I ever be able to get over what's happened to me? And oh, I want to tell you what code 307 says. And this is the code that I believe God is stamping on our life. This is your code today and I hope you'll receive it. It simply says this, three words, damaged but deliverable. Damaged but deliverable. Oh, I wish somebody get a hold of this. We're not denying that there's some damage. We're living in the real world. But God's about to deliver somebody. God's about to restore some things. God's about to make some things right. God's about to do what seems impossible. The goods have been damaged, but delivery can be completed. I want you to look at the person beside you and say, it can be completed. I can be set free. Come on, somebody. Speak it out by faith. I can be set free. I can find joy. I can have peace. I can rejoice. I will smile again. I will smile again. I will learn to laugh again. I will be a worshiper. I will praise again. I will give him the glory that he deserves. I will be somebody. I will do great exploits for God. I'm going to sit at the king's table. I'm going to eat of the king's bread. The king's going to find favor with me. God has not forsaken me. Oh, somebody. I'm preaching to somebody. God has not forgotten me. He's working a plan. He's about to call me to his mansion. He's about to prepare the way for me. Oh, if somebody believes it today, I wish you'd shout it. Damaged. But deliver. Oh, come on, somebody stand to your feet and shout it out. Damaged, but deliverable. Oh, come on, somebody. Damaged, but deliverable. I'm praying a code 307 in your life. I'm praying that God is about to bring somebody over. God's about to bring somebody through. God's about to do something in the supernatural that cannot be done in the flesh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody, clap your hands to the Lord if you believe it. Some of you still have, see, some of us are so damaged, we can't even clap our hands. Some of us came today so damaged, we can't even open up our mouth and speak the name of Jesus. Some of us here today are so damaged that we can't even have the faith that we need. But I've got faith enough for the both of us. God is about to set you free. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm almost done. Musicians are getting ready. Don't play yet. The psalmist said, in fact, it was David himself. He said, I am poor. Someone said damaged. I am needy. Someone said damaged. Yet the Lord thinketh on me. 
You know what David was saying? He was saying, I'm poor, I'm needy. At this point when he wrote this, he was running from Saul. I'm fearful for my life. I've got a calling and anointing on my life. God has, God has spoken through the prophet that I'm going to do something. But I'm hiding in a cave right now. I'm damaged goods right now. People are afraid to associate themselves with He told Yatasa. People are afraid to even speak to me. But I know that God thinketh about me. You know what he was saying? God cares enough about me that he would think about me even when I am in my lowest and weakest point. How many are thankful for a God? That doesn't just care about you when you're on the mountaintop. He doesn't just care about you when the money's rolling in. He doesn't just care about you when everything's going great. And everyone wants a piece of you. But we serve a God today. He cares about us when we're in the valley of the shadow of death. He cares about us when we don't know how we're going to make it tomorrow. And he's thinking about you. He's concerned about you. And he loves you. David said... God is my help and, yeah, I like this part, and my deliverer. You know what David was saying? I may be damaged, but I'm deliverable. I may be damaged, but God's doing something for me. I don't know how I'm going to get over this, but I remember when Goliath fell. I remember what it, oh, somebody needs to remember what it felt like when God touched you. Somebody ought to remember what it felt like when God saved you. Somebody needs to think back to a miracle from yesterday and remember what it felt like when God healed your body. And you ought to praise him like you did yesterday. Come on, I know you're damaged today. But praise him like he's the same God that healed you yesterday. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Clap your hands to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. My, 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 my. Here it is, here it is. You may be seated. And I'm almost done. Here's one thing you have to know about deliverance. You can't save yourself. You can't deliver yourself. And that's the problem with this world. we got all kinds of people who are trying to save themselves and deliver themselves with all kinds of things. And, and they're failing miserably. But God does the delivering. Amos 2 and 14. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he stand that handleth the bow. And he that is swift of foot shall not deliver. Everyone said deliver. Himself, Neither shall he that rideth the horse deliver himself. Let me give you my translation. You can't be strong enough on your own. You can't fight hard enough on your own. You can't run fast enough on your own. You simply cannot, listen to this preacher, you cannot deliver yourself. But when God gets involved, he can turn mourning into dancing. I said when Jehovah gets involved, he can turn sorrow into joy. Someone's about to get this. I said when God gets involved, he can turn trials into gold. He can turn messes into messages. He can turn victims into victors. He can turn your test into a testimony. He can make you better and not bitter. He can take filthy robes and turn them into white garments of praise. Yes. Stand with me all across this building bumped up against the spirit just now. There's just a little spirit of unbelief right now and we need to fight against it. Come on, church, I need you to pray. I can scream all day long, but we need to fight this battle spiritually. church. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. (laughs) You may not be damaged. You you may be the one who's done the damage. Hold on. I'm not preaching. There may be people here who have done some damage to others. I'm not preaching to you. You need a different message. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. You need a different kind of message. I'm preaching to someone today in Mephibosheth. Somebody's mishandled you. Maybe it was someone that you should have been able to trust. Maybe they didn't even do it on purpose. 
Maybe they did. But God can do it. Hallelujah. God can touch you. God can save you. And let me talk to a young person. You have a future in God. Yes. I said you have a, I wish an elder would just believe that with me. These young people have a future in God. You know, the world has all kinds of things that they say about young people. They're not going to make it. They're never going to amount to anything. I reject that in Jesus' name. The young people of Apostolic Tabernacle are going to be great people in the kingdom of God. The hand of God is on their life. Oh, hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. Oh, isn't that what Jesus said? I feel that same anointing today. Now, I know it's hard. I know that when we preach like this, we all want to put on our cool suit and our tie. And no one's ever hurt me. There's nothing in my life that... But you know, that's the way that you will never receive deliverance. But I wonder if there'd be someone, and I'm the first one in this altar would be willing to come and stand with this preacher and say, preacher, I admit that there's some damage in my life and I want the Lord to deliver me. Would you come and lift up your hands in this altar and say, God, all you have to do is say, God, I can't do it myself. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you need a financial miracle. Maybe someone wronged you in the workplace. Would you be willing to come and say, Lord, I, I cannot fix this myself. I'm damaged know that you can deliver me. Come on, somebody, come and call out to Jesus right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I'm ministering to somebody right now. The Holy Ghost is here. Somebody ought to cry out to Jesus right now. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 H